All right, this is going to be a tutorial on how to go over uh, importing sprite sheets, uh, converting them from GIFs, importing sprite sheets, uh, how that works, and how to use it as a background. I see a lot of questions about how you can take these type of things like GIFs or some things with frames that aren't external videos and uh, pull them into Spark AR uh, for use. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So really what the first thing you wanna do is uh, find a GIF that you want. Um, the first thing I think we should probably do is set up some sort of a canvas scene. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use a different method of doing this so we can see what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> we'll insert this canvas and then after that we're gonna insert a rectangle. This rectangle is here, we're gonna fill the parent. And uh, let's go ahead and add a new material here. And that's it. So we'll just leave it like this for right now. And um, we can um, add our animation in here in just a second. So first thing we're going to do is try to find a uh, GIF that we want to use. So let's just do something uh, whoops, like this. And we will pick a GIF uh, that is, you know, lightweight. Um, it's pretty trippy. This one's pretty obnoxious. Let's go ahead and use this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this image address and make this as easy as possible. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to convert this GIF into a sprite sheet. And you'll see here that I've already searched for that, but I use this tool here called Easy GIF, uh, GIF to Sprite. You can actually just paste the URL in, which is great. So we'll go ahead and paste that URL in. So here it is, um, and this is kind of what you want to pay attention to right here as you uh, pull these GIFs in. A lot of GIFs can be pretty big. Uh, we're really kind of trying to be conscious about our file size and what kind of weight that we're trying to uh, send to our users. So we don't want anything too big. We want to make sure that the GIF makes sense in size and um, want to make sure that uh, it's not going to be too heavy for them to display. So this one's actually not bad. It's a, it, it's a meg, uh, which is pretty large, but... Uh, but it is pretty decently high quality GIF. And, and the good thing is there's only eight frames, uh, which makes this pretty easy. So the easiest way that I can tell you this is, this is kind of the next piece here is this tile alignment. And this is, what we're doing is we're basically taking each frame of the GIF and setting it side by side. So um, if you can, if I can just uh, kill this here so I can uh, ex give you an example here. So we're basically just gonna take that frame and we're just gonna put them each right next to each other. So as we look across it, it's gonna be one long image uh, with all the frames next to each other. So um, we can do it uh, horizontally, we can do it vertically, we can really do it in a grid, however we wanna do it. So this is eight frames, so let's just go ahead and just do stack horizontally, um, and uh, and we'll just do convert to sprite sheet here. So there they are, there's all eight frames, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got our file size down, not bad, 25. Uh, we can probably get that down lower with a JPEG. So let's go ahead and just uh, save this to JPEG. Uh, we'll drop this down a little bit. We'll convert it. Not bad. Look at that. 383. Okay. We'll just go ahead and save this as it is. So we'll save that to the desktop and we'll just call this... Uh, so I can find it easy. We'll just call it exclamation point sprite. Okay, so that is how that works. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import this in. Now this is how you import these files. You uh, go over here and you select assets, import, and then um, you wanna navigate to where it is. So there it is, and we know that it's eight frames across. So we wanna make sure that this is a sprite sheet and it's a sheet and it's a sequence. So there's only one row because we only have one row. So we can lay this out to where there might be uh, two rows and four columns, uh, which would be eight or, uh, or eight rows. Um, but we only have one row and we know that there are eight columns because that's how many frames there are and there's a total of eight frames. So this basically just tells Spark AR how this image is laid out and how to use it. So we can make a grid in any fashion as long as we match up these numbers here and it makes sense. So we'll go ahead and say open. Okay, so now it's in here and it's compressing. Um, what I'm gonna do also, also is I'm gonna tell you how to uh, disable compression. 
Um, so on this, I don't want this compressed because I already feel like I've compressed it enough as it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this global setting and I'm going to say override manual. So if you want your images to come out completely um, uh, uncompressed the way that you would control them and you can compress them yourself, you just want to disable this entirely. So you're just going to want to set pass through to each one of these guys. Now, what you're doing here, um, I don't necessarily advise you to do this with all your images, uh, but for the ones that you want crystal clear, the ones that you want the most control over, uh, that's what you're going to want to do is set your stuff to pass through. So now we have a rectangle. Uh, we're going to go back here and we're going to turn our rectangle back on so we have this nice big gray box here that's going to cover our whole screen. Now, what we want to do is go to our default material one, which is right here. We're going to do our texture and hey, look right there. We can actually do each frame or we can pick the whole animation. We're going to pick the whole animation. So there it is. There's the whole animation. It's kind of swirly. And what's cool about this is we can actually go over into our uh, frames here and we can change this to as much as we want. Let's do 40, kick it up. Now it's really crazy looking. So we'll do a start random. Um, pretty cool, right? So. Um, so that's how you can get sprites into here and you can make these on, on anything. So if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to do something really trippy, um, let's just go ahead and kill this canvas. We will insert, whoop, we'll insert it this a different way so you can see what's going on, a face mesh. So got this face mesh, I think you might know where I'm going with this. So let's just go ahead and apply this material to it. Look at that. Pretty crazy looking, right? So that's how you can pull in um, any kind of GIF or you can pull in any kind of anything really you can convert in as long as you can convert anything to an image that has frames side by side uh, and you can tell Spark AR that as long as they're the same width, uh, you can tell Spark AR, hey, take this image and divide it up like this and you can pull it in and use it as any kind of a frame set that you want to. So these are some things that you can do uh, to essentially take any kind of a GIF that you can find online uh, and then uh, you want to make sure that it's uh, not copyrighted. And if it is, then you want to make sure that you have permission from the artist. Uh, we did not do this with this particular GIF, but this is just an example and we're not actually going to publish this. So um, go ahead and play around and try to get, um, you know, pull in GIFs and pull in um, different types of animation sequences. You can even get them off YouTube if you want to. As long as you get the frames out and you can put them into an image, uh, you can put this into a sprite sheet and you can do whatever you want. So take this, roll with it, and... Uh, have fun.